right. So, <laughs> so Michael Dell actually spoke this morning. He was up on stage uh, taking questions and asking questions of Phil and Darren. Right, and dispelling rumors and uh, preconceived notions. That was a big part of it. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I learned a few things today. How what did you, you learn? Well, I learned that uh, Dell started as a storage company. Yeah, he talked about how um, Dell started as a storage company. They were doing hard drives. Uh, a customer walked into their office. Martin Marietta, he said. Martin, <laughs> Martin, Martin, Martin Marietta Marietta walked into their dorm room office. Right, and uh, said, well, how are you selling those things as yeah. opposed to the hard drive, meaning a computer? And he was yeah. like, oh, that's a brilliant idea. Right. So we're talking about having a, a we're talking about a company that's uh, sort of customer, customer driven in mm -hmm. terms of the direction that they go. And, so that was that was good. Yeah, I did talk a little bit about how you know they've moved, and um, in the '90s, uh, they realized that you know the client server was a really important thing, and yep. that kind of kept their focus going. Most business apps prior to that had been running on Unix, and right. they saw the big client server initiative and wanted to get into the Intel-based server market in a big way. So yeah. a big investment there. And uh, then uh, bigger, faster storage wasn't enough, and their customers were actually wanting them to focus more on their industry needs. What about the medical industry? Right. What about education? You know, things like that. And so right. they started focusing a little different, and uh, they took on a solutions mission, is what he said. That's yeah, and and it said that that was a big part of the Perot acquisition because yes. they've got a big play in the medical exactly. space, medical services, things like that. So yeah. needing more industry expertise, you can't continue to differentiate just on speed and right. connectivity and things like that so so that, that was a big focus of today's talk yeah it, it was good you know I mean he was cracking jokes and um, making light of you know the things right. it was just he was being funny that, did you find him funny at least I was laughing you were cracking up. I was cracking slapping your knee. up. I was cracking <laughs> up. So, so, and then the other thing he talked about was ch was channel. So I think yes, he said he greater than twenty five percent of their of their business into commercial accounts mm -hmm. is going through the channel, and had a lot of channel partners coming up and talking about thanking them for uh, continuing to invest yeah. and integrate and give them a place to play. So. I mean, obviously, they're going to talk about how focused they are on the channel here at the Dell Storage Forum. Yeah, because there are a lot of channel partners right. here. Right. <laughs> there are a lot of channel that, partners here. <laughs> a lot of customers that buy through the channel. So yes, they want to exactly. show the investment there. Do you think, um, you know, outside of the Dell Storage Forum, this, obvious, yes, it's a focus, but um, are they making it seem bigger than it is? You know, I think what any supplier wants is for their channels to be value add, yeah. right? So, so someone made the comment yesterday, not volume add, it's value add. So what are your, yeah. <laughs> right? I think I heard that from yes, somebody yes. yesterday. And and so what's that value add? Some of that value add may be an industry expertise. If you've got a, if you've got a, um, if you've got a channel partner that knows the manufacturing industry really well or yeah. knows this education business really well or knows government really well then they become a logical partner for Dell. Sure. So I think that's that's one of the ways that they're that they're looking. A along the channel lines, you know, they they even said that please fill out the forms here, um, give us give us your give feedback, us suggestions, right. give us your feedback of course, but also opportunities they're looking for. Yeah. And uh, so they they said that they would sit down with Michael himself and look at the uh, interesting opportunities that came from the feedback sessions. Right, so. and then of course there was the one customer who said, do you have any way for me to, to migrate off of my three my Dell branded three letter storage system and yeah. so can you help me with that? And I was surprised, I was shocked that Michael actually said, yes, we can help you with that. Yeah, you, you I didn't think he was going to expect from a CEO, to, right, yeah, a yeah, roundabout yeah, answer yeah, yeah, that never yeah, actually... He was very direct on that. He was, he yeah, was. Yeah, so. they, they talked uh, about, you know, the fact, uh, one of the things that um, sets them apart is by adding Ocarina technology, um, they can they can have a better product because no one else in the market has those assets. To well, pull no one in. has the Ocarina assets, but there are right. a few other assets out there like data domain and uh, you know so they so yeah. so, and so, yeah, they, so there's they other were solutions like, you know, that you can sort of integrate in. But I think that the interesting thing is from day one, both with the acquisition of Exonet and the acquisition mm -hmm. of Ocarina, they just they made a strategic decision not to sell those as discrete products, but actually okay. to integrate them into the storage systems. And yeah. so now the question is, how quickly will they start to come out with some of that? There was an announcement of the scalable file system here, integrated with Equalogic here at the show, and 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 ultimately, and it's already available on the Power Vault line okay. as well. And so that's sort of some of their NAS strategy. I think somebody said they wanted to use it as their uh, their their way to 
uh, kill NetApp. So good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Go. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so they've so they've got that. Actually, they get some of that uh, Power Vault uh, uh, line from that app. So it's the yeah. OEM, uh, at least some of the software, uh, not the file system, but the software for the Power Vault line from that app, which was in Genio, in in Genio bought by NetApp. So, anyway, a lot of cooperation. We've tired old word, but a lot of that going on. So sure. Um, well, there always is, always will be, always, always will have be. been, you know, have, I mean, yep. so, um, Mike, uh, Darren actually asked Michael because they switched it up. You know, Michael asked questions first of Darren and Phil, and then Darren and Phil asked questions of Michael, right. and then the audience asked questions of them. But, um, so Darren actually asked, you know, what can Dell bring, uh, that no one else can? And so just a few notes on that because everybody, you know, things like that. Dell focuses um, more on the mid-market instead of right. the world's biggest customers because he says the um, most of the market is the mid-market as opposed yeah. to the biggest customers. Uh, yeah, there's no question the mid, mid-market's mid growing. It's yeah. a huge market. And, of course. And, and, and there are and so many more companies in that, right. in that area. That's right. That's right. Uh, somebody it, made the analogy that Dell wants to Although no one likes to, no no systems company wants to be compared to another systems company, they want to be thought of as completely unique. But the analogy that I heard the other day was, you know, Dell is sort of the IBM for the mid market. Right. So uh, you know, wrapping, trying to wrap services, systems, financing to serve the mid market customer. Yeah. So. And then the other thing, the other thing that um, you know they wrapped it up with uh, was that. You know, somebody asked him what what gets you excited um, after so long of being a CEO. Oh, yeah, He's been right. working since he was twelve and CEO since I don't know how long, how yeah. I, what age he turned CEO. Well, well when did he found it? When when he, he, was in, he he founded it when he was in college, so right. I think he was a freshman or a sophomore. Was he so, freshman or sophomore? Yeah, okay. so nineteen, twenty years old, something like yeah, that. So he's been for there. a while. For a long time. Well, no, I, I did not say that. <laughs> that so, sounds like I'm calling him old. <laughs> um, but he talked about how, you know, the the, the fact that um, there's enormous amount of data that, you know, needs to be organized and pushed forward. And, you know, there are so many opportunities in the medical field yeah. that he wants, what drives him is that he wants to be the solution for organizing that well, data. Yeah, at least he wants to be part of it. I, it'd be interesting to see what kind of investments uh, that yeah. he s- continues to make. In He keeps in, talking about the medical field, so uh, that's an uh, interesting little... Right, and there's opinion. a lot of work that needs to be done in the medical field. Definitely. So we're not making necessarily great decisions on the medical side, so yeah. I think better decision-making is a big part of it. What do you, what do you think the bad decisions are? Oh, I just don't think we we don't leverage the data. We have a conflict between data privacy mm-hmm. and data uh, and, and data analysis, and so being able to get all of that data redacted into a pool that you can then analyze and see what uh, kinds of uh, solutions actually might work with, with with different people. I think that's a huge thing. I, I actually went to um, I, I I went to what was the I, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the conference. I've been to many Uh-oh. conferences, but uh, I do that too. BioIT World. I went to BioIT okay. World, and there was a there was a company there who was talking about what they had launched, which was uh, uh, called Patients Like Me. Okay. And uh, and Patients Like Me allows you to put in your disease and all kinds of factors about yourself, and it, it's you know it's a you know it's a self-identifying community, and you can decide how much you want to disclose. Okay. But. but Essentially, what you end up with there is um, a hundred thousand uh, person clinical trial potentially of people mm. saying, "I've got this disease. I'm taking this medication. I'm having this side effect, that sort of thing." So, I think that kind of data that's coming out of those kinds of communities actually could could have a huge impact on on oh, medical. So, yeah, I, I, I actually like that a lot. I, I may sign huh. up. I just need to acquire disease. Right. I was just about to ask. <laughs> what diseases do you have? <laughs> Hopefully none. I'll be right back to you on that. So. Smile ring, smile, uh, I have smile s- lines? I have laugh line uh, disease. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that caught your attention? I, You know, I think those were the big things. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I took a few notes. I was doing a little tweeting while Yeah, you were actually live tweeting. What's well, your Twitter ID, by the way? Uh, way too long because uh, so yes it got, is yeah, actually I, we, we need to adjust J- that <laughs> i need to find another twitter id jt macarthur 
56. Where does the 56 come from? I can't imagine. You don't? <laughs> you just, ever 51 through 55 was taken? I was, yeah, okay. exactly. So <laughs> the, the right. last one taken was born in 56. Yes, that's right. So. Okay, then.